Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Matt from AWS. Today we're in Las Vegas at AWS reInvent 2018, and I'm joined by Peter from Health Direct Australia. Thanks for coming. Thank you, thanks for having me. So tell us about Health Direct Australia. Uh, Health Direct Australia is basically all about connecting people with healthcare. Uh, we do that through a lot of different channels. We run telehealth services, we run digital services, and we also provide a lot of health literacy online, and we're basically like a Dr. Google for Australia. Okay, cool. So that implies a lot of data, that you're sort of aggregating a lot of different data sources. And you know, healthcare is really exciting because it presents a lot of interesting architectural challenges, both from the volume of data, but also the regulations that you have to deal with. Is that right? That's true. Basically, we have two different levels of overlay when it comes to how we manage the data itself. So I also have how we manage the privacy of the data, but also I have to manage it at a security regime, which is the equivalent of uh, what we call our ISM, the Information Security Manual. So highly regulated from a security aspect and highly regulated from a privacy perspective. Great. So before we dive into the architecture and how, how you built it, give us an idea of scale. Like how, how much data are you collecting or how many sort of hits are you getting in this architecture every right. month? Uh, basically what the objective is between being able to provide people with access to health services, that means every service, every provider, and every practitioner in Australia. Okay. And that means then when I offer that out to every single uh, health practitioner and provider themselves, they can use our system to look each other up and it's a national directory service, so it's national critical infrastructure. Great, okay. We operate around about 90 million hits a month. Wow. Uh, that basically is people searching to find services, different practitioners looking each other up to refer, or even from hospitals to discharge patients. Okay, cool. So let's dive into the architecture then. So sure. tell us what you have on the board here. I see sort of two halves. Uh, what are you representing here? Uh, basically, it's a split division. It's like a responsibility segregation. Okay. Uh, and that's because we do a, a write intensive side and we do a read intensive side. Okay. The reason that we have the read intensive side is because our APIs are hit very, very frequently and we want to be able to provide the, the high availability and the scale. On the write side, we've got to do all the regulatory functions, which basically means that we've got to be able to process the logic behind the data mm -hmm. to make sure it's clean, to basically process it as well to the level that we assure the quality before it goes out into the sector. And that way we're avoiding issues with the data that's out in the market. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be discharged to the wrong provider. Yeah. You don't want to be discharged to the wrong practitioner. Okay. So we have to do quite a lot in terms of the quality assurance of the data. Okay, so two sides of the architecture, the, the read side and the write side. Let's start with the write side. So you have a number of different services here. Um, how, how do you actually, given this is the write side, how are you writing data into this solution? Yeah, so it comes in two forms. Mm -hmm. One way is basically through our API gateway, okay. which is effectively our write APIs. Yeah. Coming through, all APIs are implemented as microservices running in Lambdas. Yeah. And effectively what we do is we basically publish those across and into Kinesis. Okay, so data coming in via API gateway. You said you're using uh, Lambda for microservices. Yeah. Are, are you writing them in Java? What, what are they written in these days? Uh, they're all written in Node at the moment. Okay, cool. So we're, we're fine with that. It actually is a reasonable way in which we're using our lambdas in order to be able to be web-facing as well. Yeah, yeah. We, we see incredible popularity of Node with our customers yeah. these days. So the data comes in through the, the API gateway, yep. um, hit, hits your lambda, and then you're sending it first into Kinesis? We do, yeah. Okay. So what we're doing with Kinesis is basically it provides us with a buffer. Mm -hmm. And it provides us with a level of recovery around the data that's coming in from every API request. Okay. And it gives us just at least a queuing mechanism yep. where we can then understand the event time that goes on so that we can at least process things in order. And what would be one example of the type of data that would end up in Kinesis? Uh, basically, they're payloads. Okay. So we, what we call a data change event, for yeah. example, which will be uh, a change of address. It could be a change of the practitioner, its registration. Got it. And it can also be uh, at a system level, it could be an administrative change. Represented so, as some kind of a, a data structure. And, exactly, yeah. Okay. So cool. we just use an event payload packaging mechanism. Okay, so I, I heard you say the word buffer. You know, I, I love thinking of Kinesis like that, like uh, as a queue and a way to sort of queue up and buffer information yep. for processing. So moving on there, you have EMR. So are, what, what EMR can do a lot of things. You can run a lot of different software and frameworks. What are you running on your EMR cluster? So within EMR, we, what we run is Apache Spark. Spark, okay. So we're running Spark applications. We have, uh, effectively, they run like state machines. Okay. So each one has a particular role. 
and that's the division of the data itself. So think of it in terms of like lineage. Yeah. So what's raw data? Let's process that data, stage the data, make sure that it's valid, do our QA checks, and then produce it as a gold representation, which is then making it accessible for other services from that point. So is this uh, sort of a cluster that's always on running, or do you have ephemeral clusters? It, it clusters? runs hot. Great. So it runs hot, hot the whole time. Yeah, I guess with that but, volume of traffic. Yeah. Absolutely. But uh, what we can do is we scale up and scale down. Got it. So what we're able to do is at least say uh, we have a, a set of configurations that basically match the, the load and what we balance for the load during the day and during the evening. Okay. Uh, we have less uh, write intensive operations during the evening and we've got more during the day. The scale out for that, yeah. okay. And a lot, of, a lot of our data as well comes from uh, S3 where we have traditional uh, applications, uh, legacy apps and those sorts of things which actually still drop files. Got it. Um, so you, they can either sort of effectively stream the information in via API Gateway or just drop files into S3. Yeah. So we actually uh, save, uh, have our Medicare files, for example, okay. get dropped into S3. Because you have a lot of different data providers with different Absolutely. levels of capabilities, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So huge variety, um, reasonable volume, and on the on the read side, that's where we want the velocity. Great. Well, let's move to the read side then. So sure. you know we have the, the processing that you're doing with Spark Jobs and EMR ends up in S3. Now, from the read side, this is architected a little bit differently. I see some different icons here. Tell us about how this works. Yeah. So at the end of the day, what EMR basically does for us is another application that publishes. OK. So we push, just like we have here. We've got an input stream. Now we've got an output stream. OK. And again, that buffers. And what it enables us to do then is buffer up writes back to Dynamo. And we use Dynamo as basically a read-intensive database. It holds a data structure that's in a published representation, as opposed to being in uh, raw data formats. Got it. So it's a representation of a domain. So it's very domain-driven, what we're storing inside Dynamo. The reason that we store it in domain-driven uh, representation is so that we can also easily use DB streams to ingest into Elasticsearch. And then why are you using both data stores, both Elasticsearch and Dynamo? Because what we find in terms of what people search for is very different. So we semantically enhance the data itself. Yeah. So we can match it with conditions. So when someone's looking up something, they might, they might want to find it by address, mm -hmm. but then they also might want to find it by a particular condition. Now that could be uh, measles, mumps, those sorts of things. Yeah. And who's your nearest provider who will be able to take you to an emergency Got department? It. And those types of relationships, and you'd have to have a ton of indices, in other words, to do that exactly. kind of yes. Okay. That makes sense why you're using Elasticsearch in addition to DynamoDB. Um, and I see here, you know, you, you're again using Kinesis as a buffer, um, but you also have uh, Athena. Uh, so you're using, is, is that for querying then? Yes. Okay. So we have two, two forms. Uh, one form is a immediate analysis, yeah. and the other form is effectively what you would say is more like query the data lake. So this is, uh, I guess, I imagine Parquet files probably sitting yes. in S3? Yes, yeah. Okay, so you process them, you produce Parquet files, drop them in S3, then you can use Athena to easily exactly. query them. Exactly, yeah. Okay, interesting. So that's our main query tool. Uh, we partition the data from our EMR in a structure that allows for a very easy domain-based lookup. Okay. When we need Athena to ask Dynamo, then we're doing a lot more in terms of uh, a structured representation for quick reporting. Got it. Yeah, it's interesting how you tier your data for sort of reporting and, and sort of the, the, yeah. the longer tail uh, queries. Yeah. And it, within our S3 bucket, it's basically operated like an append log. So we have the full longitudinal data set. Yeah. So you can query that at an audit level, exactly where the data came from, its provenance. Yeah. And what the analytics will provide us from that is basically whether or not the data is shaping itself well over time in terms of its quality. And we use that to measure whether or not it's adequate in terms of quality. Uh, and trace that so that we can provide it out to our uh, customers that actually can choose and represent data sets themselves huh. based on the quality that they're receiving. Okay, I like that flexibility. So you're retaining data for a long time then? Absolutely. Are you tiering it as well or are you using Glacier or anything I do, else there? yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a very good question because uh, where we go from here with health data, I've got a, um, uh, one of the reg regulatory aspects is that I have to hold it for over 25 years. Wow. Uh, when it becomes to uh, our indigenous population as well, we have to retain that for its lifetime. Hmm. So we actually can never discard or dispose of that data. 
I love it. And what better place than sort of S3 and Glacier? Maybe it's like write once, delete never. <laughs> and Absolutely. lastly, I see here on the read side, you have another sort of API gateway in Lambda. Yeah. So what is that for? So that's the read APIs. Got it. So what we have is we also have people who like to integrate with our services as opposed to just receive them. Got it. So they can actually use our API to wire up their own widgets, um, their own search boxes, for example, mm -hmm. on their own sites. Uh, and we also offer it in terms of um, just pure integration into our own services. So for our own internal services, we write in a consumer API. And we also offer that out so that others can build something against our consumer API, or we can prepack it with a widget ourselves. Great. Well, I love the different uses of different data stores, the flexibility you have, the scaling in and scaling out to handle the sort of scale that you're working at and, and the varying conditions. It's a very interesting architecture. Thanks, thanks. for sharing it with us. Thanks, man. And thanks for watching. This is my architecture.